Hey guys, today we're going to install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers on Linux Mint. So these are going to perform a whole lot better than the open source NVIDIA drivers. So first thing we're going to do, we're on our Linux Mint desktop and we're going to search for the we're just going to type in DRI to search for driver manager and we're going to open up the driver manager. Now, fortunately, this is super, super easy and it's going to search for any updated drivers. So any proprietary or optional drivers that aren't there that would work for our system, it's going to automatically find them for us. And here we see they are right here. So you have um, this one on the bottom that's selected here, the new Nuevo or whatever drivers, the open source drivers. They're the free open source ones but the performance is pretty bad with them. And, you know, if you want to be pure and open source, great. But if you want your hardware to actually work the way it's supposed to, just, just use the proprietary ones. Um, Linux is great. Open source is great. But um, honestly, the priority is just having your actual hardware work. And if your OS or your drivers aren't having your hardware work properly, they're not doing their job open source or not, my, my opinion anyways. So having tried these in the past, you, using the proprietary NVIDIA drivers work way better and you, you definitely should do it if you're if you're using an NVIDIA card. Now, if you're using an AMD card, they're baked into the kernel and you have nothing to worry about. But um, here you do have to worry about it. Now, this is way easier. Now, this is for G, GeForce GTX 1080. So it's a little bit older, but it's still supported and works. And let's just go ahead and apply this change. Uh, I'm just going to have to type in my password. And boom. It's going to download the drivers and install them for me. Now, this is super easy. It's just a, you know, point and click GUI. You just open the driver manager, click next, next, you know, click the, the, the little box there and go next. And then it just installs for you and boom, you're done. So the easiest thing in the world. Um, I couldn't imagine this being much easier unless they were just installed by default. But so it's, uh, it's also easy on Ubuntu but I think you had to, I had to run a, like a one or two commands. It was still super easy, but not as easy as this. This is like the easiest process that you could pretty much expect. It's gonna take a minute, but uh, let, let's see this finish. And now it's installing the drivers. So it downloaded them and now it's installing. And you can see on the right side here, kind of a fun thing. You, you can see all my cores suddenly become active. So I wasn't using CPU cores to download it, but um, so that's just network usage. But now that it's downloaded, installing actually uses up CPU cores. And you can see my second CPU core there. That one's at 100. So it's mostly just using that. And the other ones are for miscellaneous, uh, whatever. I don't know. But in any case, it's installing. A oh, whole bunch of core usage across all of them. Everything's at 100% now. Looks like it has some, I guess the installer has some pretty good, uh, it makes pretty good use of multiple CPU cores. Um, interesting thing. Not that it matters too much. It's not like you do, you install these drivers every day. It's like a one time thing and you're usually pretty good. And boom, we're done. So we, we've installed the drivers. But it says, hey, you need to restart your computer to complete the driver changes. And you know, technically, you could probably go in on the command line and say, you know, LS mod, INS mod, whatever other goofy stuff you're going to do. But even then, I wouldn't trust it to be working exactly optimally. You should bounce it no matter what. And who wants to mess around with that stuff, right? We installed it with this GUI. Now all we have to do is restart the system and we should be good to go. So let's restart it. So you're going to see I'm still capturing the video because I am using a VIT a hardware capture device from another machine. So this is going to take a bit anyways. Here we go. Here's my BIOS, um, UEFI BIOS here. So technically not BIOS, but anyways, there we go. Linux Mint's coming up and boom, we're booted back into Linux Mint. Let's log in and just see that everything's working correctly. Here we go, we are in. Um, it's giving me the welcome screen now because I never unchecked this box, which is fine. I'm just gonna close that for now. Um, it looks like it changed my uh, scaling, um, not my resolution. I mean, this is a 4K screen. This is very sharp. I'll, I'll bet screen captures of this are, are gonna work a whole lot better now. So let, let's take a look here. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, displays. Scaling 200%. So scale the UI, UI elements and keep. So we still have our 4K display. We're still at 4K. We just scaled the UI elements and there we go. 
Um, looks pretty reasonably nice. And did we scale that enough? Uh, it, it still looks pretty nice. Uh, it may be something to play with, but there you go. That's how we installed our driver. Let, let's check the driver manager. I, I just want to see this after installing it. Looking for drivers. Let's let it search there. It searched and it says, hey, these are what are available. So we could switch back to open source if we want one proprietary driver in use. And this is the one that we just installed. So we are good in terms of proprietary drivers. Everything's working great. Um, it, it messed around with my my res my uh, scaling and stuff a little bit, which is, I, I guess, no big deal. You know, I might want to play with that a little bit more. But yeah, there we go. There's our proprietary driver. I'm not going to demo. I don't have any games installed in this system yet, but I, from my testing in the past, um, like I've tried running games with the open source driver and with the proprietary driver. It's a little choppy with the, the open source driver. It runs nice and smooth with the proprietary driver. So seriously, if you want any of that stuff to work, just use the proprietary driver if you, if you care about your graphics and stuff working properly. So anyways, if you found this video useful, definitely give me a thumbs up for this video. If you've tried this yourself, leave a comment down below. And uh, you might wanna hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on our other videos. We do a lot of Linux stuff, but we still do Mac OS and Windows stuff. We do like hardware, software, coding, 3D printers, Raspberry Pis, robots, um, networking, all that great tech stuff. If you like tech stuff on your YouTube feed, definitely hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. But that's it for today. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.